초 남았습니다. No guys, I did not mute myself. I just had to turn off my phone so that it doesn't ring during the cast. Welcome guys back to Nexon Sponsorship League. It's the Eye of Tiger Gaming versus Zephyr. Zephyr, yeah, I think that was the pronunciation. So Zephyr Dota versus Eye of Tiger Gaming. Well, well, we have a slot today and well, Blitz and Cole, they had a little bit of a bumpy series against MVP Hot 6. I must say it was not as close as you would imagine it to be. Yeah, so it's not as it's not as uh, one-sided as you imagine it to be. If you haven't watched it, go watch it right now. Of course, the fact that they are in the finals, uh, winner bracket finals, does spoil the result. If you are listening to this, but well, can't be helped. Zephyr Dota, they they won three one, but. They had very, very close games. They were very callous in certain games and out of position a lot of times. And I must say, Corey, he has impressed thus far as the carry player on Zephyr. And, well, should continue to impress on the side of Eye of Tiger Gaming. They are your Pinoy squad, you know, quote, quote, because they do have, I think, three Filipino players as well as two Korean players. So I think that's how it is. So, Pinoy Gaming versus American Dota, which is more superior? It's up to you to decide. And we're gonna just run through the draft a little bit. We have OD, normally banned out, Alchemist as well. All these things, not really that much to note. I mean, these are the popular heroes of this meta game. But on the side of Eye of Tiger, they have a Prophet ban, which is pretty interesting to me. I haven't seen any amazing Prophet. I mean, Bamboo's four staff Sprout Prophet was pretty cute. But apart from that, it wasn't anything that fancy that's worth a ban. But then again, Prophets are never fun to deal with. So, yes, that's that. Life Stealer, very, very good hero of Corys. But then again, that guy just wrecked on a Chaos Knight as well. So, really don't know where his weak points are. And, well, Morphling maybe. But in the game of Morphling, his team threw hard. They fed really hard. So it wasn't really his fault. Nick's Assassin got to be removed here as well as the famous Storm Spirit for Blitz. So we'll see what... We'll see how Blitz actually decides to deal with this. On the other hand, it's going to be a very straight for Yusin once again. There, Mr. Master Dash Vader. Remember the dash is very very important for all the kids under 16, So yep. Remember that, and of course the Dragon Knight is going to be the fourth pickup here for Eye of Tiger. So very, very standard Dragon Knight pickup. I think Filipinos play, play it quite a bit as well. It's very in their style. China uh, has this tendency to pick up a Dragon Knight in the middle as well. So DK very, very sustainable in the mid lane. Uh, really can't go too much wrong. You know, once you get that bottle crow going, uh, there's always that Slark. There's always that Slark. Is it going to go middle? It could be a mid now, that is Dragon Knight. It could be an off lane as well. I don't think it's gonna be a Meepo, guys, because uh, Meepo is Eosin's hero. So, yeah, it's Eosin's hero, and Ventral Spirit is gonna be his. So, no, no, Visage is gonna be played by Purge as usual. So, Mr. Kevin. But well, we'll have to see. We will definitely have to see this. It is a storm ban. I won't say it's that big a loss, to be honest. I mean, Blitz is good on that hero, but Storm Spirit is not applicable in all games. So, do let me know if the sound quality—I mean, the sound the sound levels—are not too good for you right now. I'm gonna lower the in-game sounds. Shadow Fiend is gonna be banned, actually. So, no Blitz Shadow Fiend. I have Tiger, they don't want the SF getting a free farm because Dragon Knight really can't hope to pressure Shadow Fiend out of lane. So, Dragon Knight, not the best for locking down heroes. He's good for punishing heroes leaving the mid lane where he can just shoot away at the towers and yeah, just burn down the tower with your corrosive breath. It's a nice long stun as well. Once you hit level 6, you can surprise the enemy by transforming into a dragon, drop that dragon tail, and with your two supports rotate in, probably get a kill. Alright, so what's Zephyr going to pick up here? Pugna. It's going to be Pugna, okay! So they are going very very aggressive, they have a Pugna for pushing, they have Visage Vengeful for that very very scary trial in with the Slark. And I think... Uh, 
Eye of Tiger, they have the goods to be dealing with this, but CM probably will not be dropping any ultimates. Tibbersaw is going to lose a lot of his life if he continues spamming out those spells. And we'll just have to see what happens here. Uh, a lot of towers will be dropping. And now we have 2 seconds left on the bonus. Time for Eye of Tiger. What will they be picking up is 10 seconds left on that. They need their hard carry. Are they going to... Well, concede and go it? No, they settle down for the late game. So they're not going to... They're not going to call Zephyr on their all-in. They're going to sit back, use Timber Source, Chakram, and Dragon Breath, Windrunner's Power Shot to try and push back the pushes. But then again, you cannot counter-push a Pakna Blast. So we'll see how that actually works out. Now on the side of the Radiant, we have your Pinoy favorites. I have Tiger! Plus two. Koreans-ish, I think. Chrissy is going to be on that Timber Source. He has impressed the last time I saw him. Jumong is going to be on the Dragon Knight. It's going to be cast on the Crystal Feeden. Raya is going to be on the Spectre. It's going to be Pyong on that Windrunner. On the side of the Dire, we have your favorite Zephyr Cory. Going to be playing the Hot Carry Slot. Hello, everybody. This Purge is on the Vengeful Spirit. Sexy Bamboo actually going to be playing uh, the Visage instead. I think Purge had finally put his foot down. Like no more Visage for me, Heath. He played Visage 3 out of the 4 times they played um, against MVP Hot 6. And on the side, uh, on the middle lane here, we'll have Blitz on the Pugna, and it'll be Ilsin sitting on the off lane. So this time, he's going to be baiting from a whole new level on the off lane, and we'll see how he does. Right, so 22 seconds to the creep spawn, and I'm looking forward to this. And he has gone for a very, very... Well, I tried this off lane build on the next uh, in pubs. Double tango, ceiling salve. The tango does allow you to just munch on it as the lanes go past. And on the off lane, because of the recent changes, uh, it's really difficult for supports to actually stop any kind of EXP gain on an off laner. So you can see new heroes like Axe all working out really fine on the off lane. And you have two tangos to just munch through it to make sure your health are always out of the danger zone rather than having to pop a wait till that 400 ish health loss to pop a solve. So it's a very nice build. The style shield will resist some of that uh, crystal hits as well as the Windrunner arrows. Game Setong problem. Soon start. Okay. So we will soon start. Cory, on the other hand, has gotten two branches for good luck. One in each pocket. Purge, on the other hand, has gone for full-on regeneration. I really like this on supports. I really don't like... I really don't like getting uh, branches on supports. I feel it's a waste of money where you could be getting some regen. Unless uh, your goal is really uh, not spent elsewhere. Otherwise, I really don't think it's that worth it. And now with double damage, Purge could get a first blood. Uh, maybe help out Blitz in the middle lane. It could happen on the off lane, but I don't think Chrissy should die here. He should not. I say should, but if he tries to contest the pull, he could get into trouble. And another thing, of course, about Windrunner supports, uh, eh, not the greatest. So we'll have to see, because you do need a couple of good levels before you can get it. And Ilsin blocks up two of the creep wave, uh, two out of the creep wave. And well, I guess that gets the focus fire onto one melee creep. And again, we have the. 1800 Melini. This is pause, please, maybe? Let's speak Korean, guys. Sorry. Okay, so, well, we're gonna just see how this is gonna be going out. I'm not so sure about a slot in this trial lane. I, I don't know why they picked up slot. Maybe for the diving tower potential? Probably that, but. I don't see a point in getting a slot in a push orientated lineup, especially with a partner. He doesn't really 5 man that well, that's the problem with Slark. Um, he's one of those guys that picks off supports in the back lines. And, well, I just feel that is not the greatest hero you could have picked up. You could have picked up something like a Lash Shrek. You could have picked up something like a Lash Shrek. And I think yeah, it's going to be a little bit better than that. But, eh, they probably want to settle down for a little bit of mid game and not wanting to just. Um, go for the late game in general, and are we going to have to read cosmetics here is the question. Not even sure what's happening because I can't read Korean. Alright, let's look at some cosmetics. We have the horns of malicious, malicious efflorescence. Yes, into the mortal universe pierces the horns of purest strife. 
Yes, I quite like this headset. A lot of nice headsets for Spectre. Robes of malicious efflorescence. A billowing flow of haunted light plays about a dreaded form. Nah, boring. Unfolding and furling and yielding unstoppable. Well, you need some items to do that. Charge energies hold tight to a shadowy being. Oh yeah, there's the copy pasta one here. By Cersei. The last time we were on the show, I misjudged Inuxi, so public apology right now. But it was done by Cersei. Now, why do I say that? So take a look at this. This is a really awesome CM set, I must say. It's a really good CM set, I really like it. And we cannot go into showcase mode, so I'm a little bit mad. But Cape of the Frozen Feather, and well, let's read tool text here. A day before the wizard descended into the glacier to begin his hibernation, he offered Crystal Maiden these last precious gifts, armor and a staff. Strong as ice, but light as a feather, believed to have once belonged to a winter deity. Now, you see, there are... You see here, you wonder why did they mention gifts, armor and a staff, when this is obviously a cape? Well, then you have the copy pasta. Look at that. Someone got the got a little bit iffy with the con control C, control V, and this is exactly what we get. The copy pasta set. But it's a really nice set, apart from that. And yes, I have made enough space for them to unpause now. <laughs> okay. Alright, so he was asking if it was if it was if, well if you are supposed to or if you're allowed to block alright, you're allowed to block with the power cock, so I'm not so sure what the admin says about that. I mean it's really not against the rule. It could be an accident and he didn't even block it that well, so he didn't even channel them to any kind of funny stuff, so I think it's not against the rules. It was in gotta get some mana burn on the board. And Pagna is going to have a pretty good time against DK. DK has armor, but when the Nether Blast comes hitting, your armor is not going to do you any good. Sexy Bamboo already exerting a lot of dominancy on this Timber Sword. Timber Sword forced to go with level 1 reactive armor, so he will not have any nukes to cast any creeps and whatnot. Eosin taking some right clicks to the face, but no problem, he has got a lot of tangos to munch through. So he's got a good serving of vegetables, he's going to get a deny even burn up some of Spectre's mana. That will show you. Jumong, on the other hand, has not gone for the Dragon Tail, but usually you get it at 4 and a 2 1 1 build. Blitz, he's got a Null Talisman, Shared Tangle, but he will be having his bottle at the end of these creep waves so long he doesn't mess up that. Doesn't mess up the last hit. So I'm not so sure what the ruling was on this. Were they allowed to block? No. But then again, I, I believe. Valve are not too happy with organizations setting their own rules. Oh, this is the Storm. This is the Storm uh, Observer Ward. So it's the new one. This is nice. really nice. And now, with the Spectre having lost his support out of lane, Eosin could actually use the Cogs to burn mana now. Yeah, he's, he might actually get a kill here if he's not if the Spectre is not careful. But unfortunately, the Creep Wave does not favor Eosin. So he's not going to try. But I think he honestly can get a kill here. I'm not so sure about the Dagger being able to bypass Cogs though. That's one thing that I'm very unsure about. But... I had a feeling that Sexy Bamboo played a good, uh, played a good clockwork. So I don't know why they gave it to Osin. And now, yeah, he traps in the Spectre, but it's not enough to get him down because he does some creeps being in the way. So very, very, very annoying. Purge, on the other hand, has managed to uh, pull the creep wave, but unfortunately for him, I think this seems to be his problem. Maybe land nerves or something. The is just harassing back, but I think land nerves. But Purge has been missing a lot of these pull. Uh, Pull, uh, yeah, pull last hits and yeah he got this perfect stack across to go to destroy his entire creep wave but we'll see if he does get any last hits out of that. Eosin on the other hand has got boots now and we have DK level 4 and a half. Chrissy gonna try and gank with his reactive armor with some passive aggressiveness. We'll see what happens here. When I say we see what happened here we are being very very optimistic now is this allowed? Body blocking better not be allowed man. Oh look at that they're pinging him. They're breaking the rules. Stop body blocking Ilsin. Look at this guy. Such a rule breaker. Ilsin the law breaker and now Chrissy back in lane here. One and a half in. And purge. Did he get any last hits there? He got three and two. So two denies and three last hits. So that's pretty nice over there. Did improve three, threefold, 
And this Observer Ward just making this little gang really, really silly right now. Pyong, does he have the Shackle Shot? He tries to go for it, doesn't find it. And even if he did, I don't think he kills the Clockwork. Clockwork just a little bit too good. And Blitz now gonna run for the wrong rune because of this try hard Korean squad just sentry warding. I mean, who even buys that? The level of try is too high. Cast! I'm not even sure that was that was really worth it, losing half your health. <laughs> oh man, and Ilsen, come on, get the snipe. Too bad he doesn't have rocket at level 3. He could have gotten some big kills here, but imagine if Ilsen got first blood with that. That would have been fun, and nope, they're gonna try it. They go for the dagger, going very aggressive here, and Pyong. What's with the pinging? I don't know, but... Sexy Bamboo. Gonna push back the Timbersaw. What's... This Timbersaw is level 1. And Cory, we'll look at his last now. It's 27 and 6, 32 for Pugna, so Blitz is just rolling the middle lane. 18 for the Dragon Knight. And Chrissy, the Stout Shield, the Tango, the South. Ilsin. It's about to hit level 5 now. Blitz is level 6, so now he has the life drain, the sucker. And Chrissy finally got his timber chain working. It has been, well, it's been broken for quite a fair bit. But now Cory is really nearly level 5, and this timber saw has been very effectively knocked out. I think he could have gotten a little bit more aggressive. I mean, a, uh, it's iffy. I don't know. But now there's a smoke gang going middle, and they're gonna try and kill Pakna. Windrunner level 3, cast at level 3 on a crystal feed in as well. And Jumong, on the other hand, he's gonna fly his bottle out. He's his dragon form, so he has that extended tail. He has grown quite a fair bit since the past few levels. And now Sexy Bamboo is gonna find Chrissy once again, and they're gonna man, my, uh, they're gonna man fight us out. Grave chill, you feeling cold, buddy? You feeling cold? Oh, Soul Assumption 1, Sexy Bamboo. Uh, gonna force out the Timber Saw, but Timber Saw is balanced, so he's gotta stay alive. Meanwhile. Oh, Ilsin dropping the spectre real low. First blood still not spilled there, six minutes in, and the illusion rune once again gonna be going out. And once again, aggressive ping coming out here. Crystal Maiden gonna have her revenge on the wolves. Chrissy. 170 gold here. Is he buying boots or is it a bottle? No, he has got... Oh no, his items flew all the way back, so someone jacked the courier from him. That's gonna cost him his boots. And uh, where is Pakna? Where is Pakna? Oh, Pakna is back at base. Out of mana, but he's working towards this mechanism. He should have it soon. But I say soon, I mean soon-ish. Jumong, on the other hand, like I said, gonna be punishing the tower tower array. Nearly down to half health, just from the spitting. And oh, gonna drop the blast here. Is he gonna go for anything aggressive? Nope, just gonna be... Tapping away, and he gets 20 gold over to the Dragon Knight. 50 last hits to the 34 of the DK. So DK not gonna feel too good. Ilsin level 3 and battery assault. And I'm gonna go for Pyong now. Rocket flare fly. Could actually go for him now. Here comes. Here comes the. Oh, he's gonna trap him, the Spectre. This could be a kill on the Spectre. The Shackle Shot does land. And no, Ilsin's gonna give up first blood. Cost with the Frostbite will bring him down. Oh, you don't try and man fight so many people at once, I guess. So Ilsin. Big deal, Dota. We'll drop the first blood here to the Pinoy squad. And now Pakna is gonna be blowing up this tower as well. Jumong's gonna lose his gonna lose his dragon form. And six points in that stick charge. So far so good. Cory is gonna be left alone now. Level six on the board perch as well. Sexy Bamboo's little gank might not work out too well. We'll see if this gank squad looks out and purge! Drops the magic missile, will they find it? The Grave Chill will come. And now Jumong, but it looks like Spectre wants to find it. Purge dropping real low, right click from Sexy Bamboo. Will take him out. Purge with the quick south. Purge gamers with the decrepit fighter. Husband saved by the waifu. Well done. And more pings, that's not allowed as well, they say. But I, I kid, guys, I kid. Regeneration on the bottom lane, she bricks it instead of taking it. Uh-huh. Logic is astounding. Sexy Bamboo gonna be back here in the top lane. Boot speed as well as the magic stick charges. So now it does even up the score for one for one. The DK really couldn't run from that. I think he thought that the Spectre was coming in and was like, oh right, let's go fight it. Spectre says, nope, just kidding. And well, gets his friend killed with that extra bravado, unnecessary bravado as well. Cast gonna be fighting against the wolf. 
That made him lose half his health there. That's gonna be the cogs. Once again, gonna be burning him. Throws a random Spectre Dagger. And Yosin a little bit of trouble. Frostbite. This is a fast, fast Crystal Maiden. Chris Yosin in a lot of trouble. Gets picked off. And that's a well played uh, hit here from the Spectre. Crystal Maiden with Tranquil Boots is a very, very fast little bugger. And Blitz did try to TP in. Uh, Blitz tried to TP in there, but unfortunately, it doesn't work out that well. So Blitz wastes a little bit of time. Chrissy, he's got his boots up. Corey hasn't gotten any aggression going. He's got his hand of Midas, got his tread, so pretty good uh, amount of items. 61 last hits to the 15 denies. 66 here for Blitz. And Blitz will have his mechanism in about 3 gold. So he's going to drop another casual partner blast on the top of that. And the Platinum Roshan will fly out. No, FDL dropout. Okay. No FDL dropout. 2 deaths on Eelson. He's just doing the Ice 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 impersonation, guys. Don't hate on him. The thing, the things, uh, the reason why the players such as Ice 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 die on the off lane is because they sometimes just take unnecessary risks. Sometimes it pays off, and they manage to capitalize on some big mistakes on the off lane. They get some good kills, and the tower goes smithereens. They get some good kills going, and uh, well, crown as kings. But sometimes when they mess up, well, we all hate on them. Sometimes you need to take risks, otherwise you won't get any big plays. Haste turn for the Windrunner. Ranger. Clarity Potion, still two of them. Like I said, it's not really that necessary, especially since you have a Crystal Maiden as a support Windrunner. You really didn't need that many Clarities. And, well, now Ilsin's gonna be looking for a hook shot here. He missed his hook shot, so that's 69 seconds. Haha. <laughs> uh, on cooldown now. Chrissy! He's gonna try and work to his arcane boots. The Spectre once again comes in with the Intimidation Haunt. And it's not gonna do too much except for right click a couple of people. And meanwhile, Blitz has got his mechanism. Could start to push with his team now. He really doesn't need to stay around and deal with Jumong. He's gonna dodge the Pukta Blast. And who's gonna coming up top? Ilsin! He's gonna be back top. And they're still clipping away the tower, the Clarity Potion is doing a little bit of work to help spam out the power shots, but now with Eosin back in lane, it's gonna be a little bit tough. Chakram not available for the Simple Sword just yet, he really needs a little bit more. Cory is just gonna sit near him and pressure his face. The Magic Wand will come out here for Cory. The Ring of Health actually, Battle Fury? Vanguard? I don't know, what's he building? <laughs> Perch. Meanwhile, he's going for the Urn of Shadows. Oh, he's going to get the big denies! 8 denies. 8 HP. 1 deny. And uh, now he's going to be joined by Blitz. He's going to hold hands. Cory is going to latch it up. And somehow, I do not understand this, it stops Mirana's leap, but it doesn't stop Balance Sword. So, exceptions, exceptions everywhere. I don't know what they hope to achieve with this. Cory just going to run out of there. Sexy Bamboo might want to give this place a white berth now. There are three heroes up top. And. There is up top and Chrissy. Oh, he's got a thousand gold. He can't get his arcane boots, but Blitz is here to push down your tower. So this construction services, Blitz gotta come in like a wrecking ball. And he's gonna drop a partner blast. One, partner blast. One, and the second one will drop it down. Don't drop it into deny range. He did drop it into deny range, but no problem. Drop another blast. Nice glyph timing. They could try to get this now. Power shot. Try and capitalize on the green. Nope. Carpet bomb coming in by Sexy Bamboo. Taking a lot of tower pot shots. The Soul Sumter will fry him up. Blitz with the mechanism very, very quick. The Shackle Shot latches nothing. Jumong comes into a whole bunch of familiars. The wrong neighborhood, of course. And Clockwork destroys the tower. So Eosin haunts the Dragon Knight and gets a tower kill for himself. Now that's Arcane Boots. And he's going to be very, very, very happy. And they're going to take another tower at the end of that. Rio or Royer is still going to try and get some farm on the board. But like I said, playing a little bit too greedy there, I think Eye of Tiger. Especially since he might decide to go for a Lincoln Sphere. I kid, of course. But I don't think anyone is going to be building a Lincoln Sphere or can build a Lincoln Sphere in this game. But now we have Massy PZ. It's time for your bottom lane disconstruction. We are going to knock down all your towers. And Corey is going to be the first one up into the lane. And it's going for a Lincoln's Battle Fury. I don't know. Maybe Lincoln's. Yeah, Dragon Tail's pretty cool. I guess Lincoln's. So Lincoln's was Slark, and we have Sexy Bamboo with the Point Booster and the Medallion of Courage. So they're all gonna be coming down here 
to bring down the tower. Jumong on the other hand is going to be fa going to be saving, um, not saving. I mean, using the flame breath to blow up the creeps that Crystal made it safe for him earlier on, and that's going to help him get a little bit of hit on some sort of farm. That's going to be a drums down, Inspector. His farm is actually pretty good. One and 0, 84 last hits, and 49. So he's pretty okay. Corey is about a full last hit, 10 last hits ahead of him, but. If this keeps up, he gets a Radiance, he could cause some serious trouble to Zephyr here. And Blitz is going to be leading the charge once more. He's nearly got his 4 stuff. With all these early towers, you can actually get a lot of money in line. Invisibility rune for uh, the Windrunner. I don't think he will be able to get too much out of that. They're going to try go for a little bit of a counter push. I'm not so sure if this is going to be the right call. There is a glyph for the Dyer, and towers just melt under the fire power of the Dyer squad. And with the Kuman Aura not selected up by Purge, it's going to be a little bit slower. But then again, he is pretty starved in levels. It's only level 6 on Adventure Spirit. Cory going to use that. Yeah, he's going to go for Lincoln Sphere. So Cory just showing them how the Pinoids are done. I think maybe just the respect purchases. Oh, the Chakram comes out. Is it going to be anything? Nah, no, Blitz. Yeah, it's going to drop that. And he gets the deny as well. Well played, sir. The TP is taking a real long time there and deciding that, ah, never mind. I will not TP there. Instead, instead decided to maybe just do the daily crossword. While waiting for it, and Blitz as well as Purge, they are going to run away, really, just going to run away. Cast with the Tranquils, Jumong, and Timbersaw. Yeah, it's going to go back to the jungle there, here's his Arcanes, but I don't think I'll see Bloodstone in too much. Uh, too short a time here, Cory. oh, Clockwork. Actually gets a solo kill? No, he gets a he gets a kill there on Wind Ranger, and now Rio is in a lot of trouble. There's a Medallion Courage there, hooked here from Eosin. There's a great chill as well. Soul Shepherd is number two, and they're gonna try and get a kill there. Sexy Bamboo might have overstayed as well. Come there, Eosin cogs him in, says sup, and he's gonna get himself killed as well. Eosin, big deal, Dota. Well, I guess that was kind of a um, zoning call, but he got Sexy Bamboo in there. Either way, I think they were both dead. No, no difference whatsoever, unless he got some big, big cog there. To block up the ramp. Not gonna happen. And Chrissy, they're gonna get some kills down the board. The gold graph is about 8,000 in favor. The net worth, not favoring Corey as usual, is 9,000. 8,300 on the partner. Very, very well done so far in terms of the farming. And now he's gonna go for the best seller, Necrobook. And Sexy Bamboo is already on his way to an Agadim Scepter. I'm not so sure why they decide to change it though. I think Sexy Bamboo can play Clockwork. So. <clears throat> not so sure. So, meanwhile, Blade Mill coming up here for the Clockwork. And they might actually go for Roshan here, the Medallion of Courage. And I saw a Reddit thread uh, the other day with people discussing if Roshan is actually too easy to kill now, especially with Medallion of Courage. On the Dire side, it makes it really easy to can just pick up heroes or make sure enemy heroes are out of position and just go for Roshan because Roshan just melts there. He doesn't do any damage and well, he's pretty pathetic right now. For a guy with 9,000 HP, he is really bad and you'll think he'll get his nuke past level 1. Roshan adding too many stats, I think, for a very high level hero. Level 30 hero and he added stats all the way, ignoring his AoE, which only does 70 damage at level 1, so this guy is such a noob Roshan. Feeds the ages all the time. And Sexy Bamboo is really, really close to his Academy Scepter. And this is this is the difference between pros and semi-pros, I'll just use that word. Uh, it's because pros really know how to find all their farm. You usually see EGM on his Windrunner, always able to get a lot, a lot of, a lot of items very, very quick. Compared to lesser um, well-known supports, where they, you see them getting starved, only sitting at boots at the end of the game, and now Blitz is just gonna sit here and there's really little he can do about this. Normally, Timbersaw is great at stopping pushes, but, but uh, normally you see Timbersaw, Windrunner, all very good at being um, anti pushes, but when there are no creeps doing the damage, rather than just the Puckner Blasters doing that. And now, you get Eosin there trapping on Jumong. Jumong's gonna be in trouble, he cannot right click this. He's gonna get decrept up, but Eosin's gonna try and stop him with the Barrier Assault. Very funny. TPing under the clockwork. Jumong, you try, bro. Go get Nether Blasted, and now he's gonna get punched in the face by Eosin. So that's 4 7 now, in favor of Zephyr. <laughs> It's gonna be Slug catching the Windrunner as well. Timbersaw is gonna be on the running. Cory even stopping for a uh, casual Midas and might get the pounce now in a second. And that's good TP there. Is that gonna be a carpet bomb? Nope, no carpet bomb here from Sexy Bamboo. Doesn't land the familiars in time. 
I guess we need Kevin Cup and Bomb Purge to handle that instead. But hey, Purge decides that I want to do the swap in this game. Can save some friends. No, this no, no, no. friend. But Ilsen has managed to catch up quite well. 3 3 and 3. Now on his score, so balance across the board, he is just balancing the game so he doesn't end so fast. And well, Sexy Bamboo, very, very, very close to his Academy Scepter, and that's three birds before level 11. That is quite the feat now. And the tower is going to take some pot shots at this, but the Necro units will come, as well as the Park of Blast. And I don't think Io Tiger Hammer have anything to do with it. It's a Shackle Shot, will not latch because the Lincoln Sphere will block it. The Pinoys have a taste of their own medicine. And once again, Nether Ward going to be chipped off there for 80 bucks. Ryo, 4,300 gold, so saving for that new condo. Most likely going to be a Radiance, could be a Diffusal Blade if we see some variation in the build, but I think it should be a Radiance because it's a good idea to buy a Radiance right now. It will do a lot of damage, it will cost a lot of hurt to Purge, it will cost a lot of hurt to Visage, lose a lot of the Grace Heaper Cloak ticks. So I think it's a good item choice. In general, the purge is nice and we get the purge purge joke again. But I think a Radiance should be in order here. He has the gold. Really shouldn't be saving for any kind of buyback nonsense. Who needs buyback? Level 11 on the Spectre. I think he's been doing a great job thus far. His team has been making space. It's 2-0-2 oh, and, and if uh, Zephyr actually stalled this a lot longer, they could result themselves in losing because Slark just doesn't cut it against a very very farm spectre. Slark doesn't cut it against a lot of farm heroes. So that's my point. Corey, he's got 2.5k now. We'll see if he goes for any damage items or will he go for the Eye of Tiger? Corey, threads now in agility form. Just regarding all extra HP. You really just want to get more damage and right clicks on the board. Blitz is just going to run up the high ground. Very, very dangerous under the most circumstances, but he has his waifu in the background, so it's okay. Going to just swap it up in time. Just swap me and go. Blitz losing quite a bit of it. Uh, quite a bit of health. Yes, the mechanism doesn't want to pop it just yet. And the Siege Creep will take a fall here. And now, Jumong actually losing a lot of health there. He made a little bit of a boo boo there. Now he's going to get a lot of right clicks to his face, but I think that actually does bring Blitz down. So that was a good one. They literally trade the Timber Soft for it. Nice swap from Purge. Well cancelled out the Crystal Maiden's ultimate. And they'll take down the tier 3 at long last at a cost of Blitz. And well. There'll be a few tears shed there, and now Crystal Maiden buys back into the game without her ultimate or anything, but she has the first two skills, so pretty decent, but I think this tower is on its way down. Is it a Radiance? Yes, it's a Radiance. Spectre of the Radiance, and no buyback. Here we go. This could be a team wipe if they're not careful. The Blade Mill will come. Ilsin traps himself in with a fancy illusion, gets the Flame Breath in the back of his behind. That's two kills. Rior dominating as well as double kill. Now, that's a little extra gold, and the Platinum Roshan is just booking it. I ain't having any of this crap. Cory, meanwhile, is going to be farming up some neutrals, gets his Midas off cooldown, and that's going to regen all that health back, but unfortunately there's Observer Wards there, so he's not going to heal anything for now. Now it's going to farm the Chicken Family. Raya, he is on a good start. 4 and 0 with Radiance. It's going to be very tough if Blitz and Cole don't actually take down Rexus now. Very, very greedy to stay without the Puckner. But Blitz just shouldn't have been in the front lines there too early. Chrissy got to get carpet bombed here. The sole assumption to fly, but then again, Pimasaur is balanced, so no kill. Aghanim Scepter before level 10. Amazing stuff here from Sexy Bamboo. Jumong, on the other hand, has gotten his BKB, so I think that really that did win them the fight. A lot of focus fire was drawn onto the Dragonite, but he had the BKB, so he was okay. Chrissy, meanwhile, still getting close to his Bloodstone. And Spectre is going for that Diffusal slash Manta style. We'll see which one he decides to go for. I want to see Purge gets Purged, but eh, could be for the greater good. The Manta style could have been a better choice, will be a better choice. But now they're going to look to apply more pressure. The Spectre Haunt is off cooldown in 30 seconds, so we'll see if the yeah, Tiger team can actually hold out. It's the best of five for you guys that are wondering. It's the best of five, the loser will drop into the lower bracket, the winner guarantees himself a slot in the grand finals as well as guaranteed second place, which in this tournament means Jack. Um, 
pardon the French, but it is about 7,000 for... 7,000 for... Second place? First place gets close to 50k to 80,000. I can't remember which one, but I think it's around those levels. So the big difference in price pool will make sure that you fight um, the right way. Fight as hard as possible for first for first place. And now Spectre doing a little bit of ratting. Eosin is trying to try and spot him out. Is that going to be a hookshot? Latches it up from downtown. And Eosin is going to snag him up. Is there going to be a Spectre Horn? There's going to be a Spectre Horn. He's going to bail him out there. Is he going to jump in? No, he's not going to jump in. He's going to run away instead. The Purge. No, he, he does jump away. Yeah, he jumps away to the sideline. Looks like it's going to be a Master style. And very good use of the Spectre Horn. Will get himself out of trouble. They did lose mid Rex though. And deciding not to fight it because of the lack of Haunt. And now Cory, he's gonna face a little bit of trouble, but I don't see him dying apart from some big silences or maybe a DK stun. Because really he cannot die without any kind of reliable stun. Crystal Maiden is just bad against heroes like these. And yeah, the Sentry Ward did earn a 50 bucks, so she spends $200 for a 50 buck rebate. That's gonna be a value. And now Sexy Bamboo in a little bit of trouble, but he has three birds with him. Jumong. He sets the birds on. He sets the birds on the timber saw. There's gonna be a slot here. It's gonna be pouncing onto the spectre. Not the best choice uh, of hero. And the mechanism now will heal everyone up. The wind runner has managed to get the mech. So 710. It's still pretty close-ish. 13k in favor of Zephyr. So not close. Just kidding. But Rio can actually look to do a lot of damage. Like we saw the last game. The only ones with the good net worth is Puck and Slark. The rest of them are behind the spectre, and they melt really quickly. And if Parkner isn't careful, he dies as well. So he's got a lot of farm, but we'll see how well he does it. Necronomicon now gonna release the zoo. Has entered, and we have the bird show today. And I was gonna be landing last one, two, three. So something to fly. Shackle shot. Lucky for him, there are no uh, fauna and flora here. So no trees to lash it, lash it up against. Tower will go down most likely. The blast comes out. Spectre really trying to deal with it. The grave chill comes out, slows him down. And one more blast should do the job. Depth, the blast, and the tower gets this deconstructed. 7 to 10 now. And we'll see if Zephyr can push up to the high ground and claim Rex with Pugna. It's never ever good to play the attrition war. I, I saw something about the wards. Oh, there you go. Victory. Yep, there we go. Jumong stuns up Blitz. And there's gonna be a quick stop here from Purge. Saves his waifu. Corey dropping down real low, but triple stun here uh, on that Versace Familiar. Will actually lock them down a little bit. Eosin is going to be backing up their half health on him. Is there a BKB? BKB already spent. Is there a missile? The timber chain, very, very powerful there. And the blast comes out. The timber saw that's doing so much damage. Purge takes an arrow to the knee. Will take a fall. Pyong in a lot of trouble as well. Sexy Bamboo blows him up. So assumed. And Chrissy in trouble. He's going to try and run away. Corey latches up. Very nice latch there. Is there a buyback on the Spectre? There is a buyback on the Spectre. They're all dropping down low. This is time to bail out. Bail the heck out now. And the carpet bomb will come. And they'll all run away. Eosin pops the spikiness. Tries to do his best bristleback impression. The Platinum Roshan. The, the Platinum Roshan flying the wrong way. And they do spot it out. Cory back in the jungle farming up. And the Centaur Conqueror is going to get right kicked down to Sanji and Yasha. Now on the Slark. Sexy Bamboo just tempting fate. Kill me! Kill me! And now it's going to pull out. There are limits to madness and this is not it. Zero gold, and this is one of those times where we have that zero gold thingy going on. You can't earn gold, you just right click for the fun of it. Wonder what's wrong with your last hits because you think you missed them when you clearly got them and didn't realize you had this city buyback gold penalty thing. You cannot earn unreliable gold. Bloodstone for Timbersaw. 8 to 14 now. They're about to lose their second set of racks if they're not careful. Range racks no longer regen, so. Very, very tough to deal against attrition threats. And Blitz is. One of the best heroes for attrition, Pakna, the Blockna Blast is just not something you want to deal with. Roshan respawns and I wonder how they knew the respawns because why? There's a visual bug where you can see the Roshan respawn through the fog. Yes, I know about this, I don't know why. I'll just call it an accident and we'll leave it at that. Cory is just going to tank up the Roshan because he will heal up, it's okay, you don't need to earn it. And now, level 3 familiars. Going to be blowing up at Roshan, and Roshan will take a spill here. No, Aegis of Immortal goes to Cory, the smoke gun comes out as well. So they're going to 428 and hit down the bomb lane and look to mess some crap up real fast. They're going to walk by the Vol Assassins, and the smoke gang the creep wave here. So this catapult, they sure showed him. Now Perch, only one going to be lying there in the background, looking to swap out any heroes.
Corey. It's gonna feel pretty ba brave about this. Yes, the Ogre Club. I think probably gonna get a BKB. Maybe not. Maybe yes. We'll see. Corey. Now gonna right click away at the melee ranks. The double drop here. Here comes the Spectre Horn. Not exactly the best choice of it, but now the Shackle Shot's gonna latch on Blitz as well as Ilsin. Ilsin is gonna get swapped away by Purge. His good friend. And Soul Sumption flies out. Gonna be dropping Pyong really low. The Grave Chill not enough to kill it. Corey loses Lincoln's Sphere Charge. Jumong. It's gonna be popping his BKB, but it's gonna be mostly wasted. Then the hookshot does fly in onto the crystal feed, and at the sidelines, there no surprises. The blast comes out, the melee racks will fall. Soul Sumption once again dropping everyone really low. Sexy Bamboo really dishing out the herd there, not pulling any stops. And the second set of racks as well go down 8 to 15. And then Zephyr Strat is working out. It punished even the top teams like DK, so I don't see why it's not gonna work against um, well, the lesser experienced Pinoy team, Eye of Tiger. Not to say they're slouches by any means, but I think they went a little bit too greedy against this push strat. They're still gonna fight it out. They have a Spectre, it's not really over till you know, they get Mega Creep, and even then it's still not over. The Spectre has some good farm, but that buyback previously really hurt him. And the next death, he will spend quite a long time in Purgatory, so. He has to be very careful about that. They're just chipping away the tower, not giving any hoots because Cory has two lives and 2012 health. Man, get with the times, it's 2014. And he does get the clip on the tower. He's gonna go out, regen it, no point wasting that Aegis. And we continue familiar blasting. Oh, swap comes out. Spectre gets caught. Matching missile as well. Purge with the aggression. Woohoo! Purge gamers gets brought down. Goodbye, rip. GG. Well played. 75 seconds on the sidelines there. Cast drops his full ultimate duration, but it doesn't really do that much. And he zips away from that. Once again, cast AFKs and says, Screw this! Saved by the Ancient Exploding. And 10 to 16, Zephyr picks up an easy win here with this push threat. Well known by everyone now in the Dota meta. It's what people consider not as fun to watch, but. It does make for quick games, and we're here. They are here for the money. We're here for the Korean Dota. They're here for the money. And Zephyr, they take an easy game one. But then again, I'm not going to count out the oppos opposition because the last time I did that, we had some really close games. All right, I have Tiger Hammer. Will it be Olads? Will it no be no Olads? Will Zephyr actually lose the game here once again? I have Tiger. Best of five. Loser goes down to the lower bracket. Winner will just sit in the grand finals and wait. Uh, wait till the actual day to play out for that 80, 80 million won. So, stay with me. We have game number two coming right up after a short break. And if you like my casting, I'm Lysander Zanor. Follow me on Facebook, like me on Twitter, and follow me on Twitch. Much love and kappa, guys. See you next game.